cryogenics, freezing bodies for future use. So cryogenics deals with this major question of can you be dead? So cryogenics not only deals with science, but also religion because of the morality of its use. So cryogenics actually allows individuals to be frozen and then brought back to life. So some different moral questions that can be brought up include, can we consider that the individual is alive, like individuals that are unconscious? Does the soul really leave the body? And wouldn't individuals be playing the role of God? So um, what actually is cryogenics? So according to Cryonics Institute, cryogenics actually deals with the freezing of the body. And so this is important because it actually stops decay and it helps to preserve the major tissues, organs, and the brain. So the brain is the major focus of cryogenics because your brain is actually what makes you who you are. And so it would then allow for this immortal society to form because individuals could be frozen and then just be brought back to life at a later time. So then really individuals would never be considered dead. And so the goal is for the future. Because um, as of right now, we do not have a way to really unfreeze these bodies. But as science as advances, we could possibly be able to unfreeze them and these individuals could be able to live their life again. And so there are different options for cryogenics. You can have just your head frozen, or you can have your whole body frozen. And so people choose um, these options mainly based on cost. Just having your head frozen does not cost as much as having your whole body frozen. So if you opt for just your head being frozen, they would then just sew your head on another body and then bring you back. So um, you would be who you are today because your brain makes you who you are, but your body would just be different. If you just had your body frozen, you would just come back like you did when you passed away. And so according to the Journal of Medical Ethics, about 250 corpses have been preserved as of 2014. So that number really isn't that big because cryogenics is kind of just starting out and we don't really have evidence of its success yet. And so according to the Cryonics Institute and how much does a funeral cost, um, cryogenics costs about $20,000 to $200,000 and for a normal funeral, it costs between $7,000 and $12,000. So cryogenics still is a very um, costly option, so I think that also deters a lot of people from getting it done. And for just a normal funeral, seven dollars to $12,000, a lot of people have that and they are willing to pay that. And so the history of cryogenics, so according to the Gale Encyclopedia of Science, cryogenics actually comes from the Greek word meaning cold and the English verb to generate. And so there are two main people um, with cryogenics. They include Michael Faraday and Dr. James Bedford. So Michael Faraday, in 1865, he actually liquefied gases. And this was very important because for freezing bodies, you need liquid gases. Like liquid nitrogen is the most commonly used gas for the freezing process. Dr. James Bedford was actually the first man ever to be frozen. He was frozen in 1967. And he will actually never be able to be unfrozen due to the fact that he was frozen using dry ice. And then um, they did not know about the potential risk of crystals. So if they ever tried to bring him back, his body would actually be destroyed through that process. So he would never be able to actually live again. And so there are multiple different freezing elements. So according to religion and cryonics, some of the major ones include oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, helium, argon, krypton, and xenon. Liquid nitrogen is still the most commonly used one today. And so the actual procedure of freezing the body, so according to frequently asked questions by the Cryonics Institute, the first step is to just cool the body with ice water. And then they actually drain the body from, of blood and then re replace it with a solution. And this solution is actually key because it is actually what prevents the crystals from forming through the thawing process. So they realized um, that that was a problem, so now they are trying to fix it. And so then once they do this, they cool the body using most likely liquid um, nitrogen, which is about negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And then once the body is actually cooled or considered frozen, they then move it to a tank that is actually filled with whatever cooling kind of element they chose which would be most likely liquid nitrogen, for permanent storage until they are ready to actually um, thaw the body and bring it back to life. And so there are um, potential risks for the procedure of unfreezing. So according to the intersection of technology, and innovation, and creativity, 
two of the major risks are crystal formation and timing. So if crystals form, through the thawing process, um, it would expand and thus it would actually break the cell walls in your body. So then your body would actually be destroyed and thus you could not actually be brought back to life. And so that's a huge risk for people that opt for this because they don't want their body destroyed. They want that capability of being able to be brought back to life. Timing is also a problem because your whole body has to be thawed at the same rate. So you can't have your arm be thawed before your heart because your heart has to pump blood to your arm. And so they actually still have not come up with really a solution to the timing problem because uh, it can just cause a lot of problems and then you might not be able to ever be brought back to life. And so will this work? According to Freezing Embryos um, by John Hopkins Medicine, embryos actually have been frozen, which are five to seven um, days old, and they have a 90% survival rate through the thawing process. So this actually gives scientists kind of hope that maybe we can just put this on a larger scale and actually then be able to unfreeze human bodies like we are able to freeze or unfreeze these embryos. And then these embryos are like, fully functional. They can work and impregnate. And so then Kim Salzy, um, according to women with terminal illness, she was 23 years old and she had terminal brain cancer. And so she just opted for cryogenics because she knew that she was going to die. And today we don't have a cure for a lot of these cancers but maybe in 100 years, we might. So she might be able to be brought back and be able to actually get cured and be able to have a second chance for her life. And so why is this important like culturally? So a lot of people do this mainly for a cure and for this idea of immortality. Um, so like today, a lot of cancers and a lot of diseases don't have cures, but maybe in 100, 200 years, they will when science catches up. So these individuals, it gives them hope that maybe one day they will be able to get cured and be able to sort of restart their life. And then a lot of people want it just from the idea of immortality. It lessens the stress of death because really death wouldn't like touch them. They could die and then just be brought back. And so they don't really have to worry about maybe like what comes after death, like is there afterlife and so forth. So it also affects people's attitude towards death because individuals believe then that nothing is permanent and like science can beat the inevitable. So really it then kind of halts the d discussion of death in public because really we believe that science can beat it, that a death really isn't something to be feared because it's something that will never really touch a lot of people if they opt to be cryogenically frozen. And so there are different religious views. So according to religion and cryonics, some people view cryogenics as moral and some view it as immoral. And so some of their arguments include, include like if they believe it's moral, they compare it to resuscitation. Like if someone has a heart attack, years ago, we would just consider that individual dead because we had no way to bring them back to life. So they compare that to cryogenics because that individual is dead, but maybe in 100, 200 years, we could have the science to actually bring them back to life. And they actually believe that really the soul has not left the body. It's more just like a coma. So they actually believe that it's more of just like they got their life paused and then it will get restarted again once they decide to be unthought. And so for the people that view it as immoral, they really view it as humans are taking kind of the role of God and we're giving these individuals a second chance when really that's not our job. Um, we aren't God and so we should not choose when individuals die and when we're able to bring them back. And it could give these individuals false hope because cryogenics has actually like never really been proven to work in humans. So we could have these people paying um, a lot of money to be cryogenically frozen, but then we never um, actually come to actually like making cryogenics work and actually unfreezing bodies. And so there are different effects on like death ceremonies. So like a funeral versus like an obituary. So for like a funeral, it could be really a time of excitement and a time of like a second chance for that individual. And for obituaries, it could be a time of reflection and anticipation. And so that's a little different than like what a normal funeral and obituary is. Like most funerals and obituaries kind of deal with mourning and sadness because 
you're never going to see that individual again on Earth, where people that are cryogenically frozen, their families might actually feel hope that maybe one day, even in their lifetime, we could see them walking around again. So that's kind of the difference. And like the time of reflection, like that's, I mean, there is some similarities. I think in both there would be mourning and sadness because like today that individual is not here. But in a hundred years, a person that is cryogenically frozen could possibly walk around again and have a second chance for their life. And then my discussion questions. So do you think allowing individuals to have a second chance at life is like reincarnation? Are they taking God out of the world? So I think from what you said with the chance of reincarnation, it seems that like the uh, like the signs that they have is like like they can't be brought back yet. It seems like a lot of the problems that they have um, because of that, what their solutions might be, like you said with the first person who was frozen and how they use dry ice and that means he'll never come back because of the crystallization. I feel like if they, the people who have, this is just like talking from a scientific standpoint, like I feel like the solution of like thawing them could be like, like maybe they messed up when they frozen before and like that could have like ruined the process, so, I, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I sort of considered it like reincarnation, like, you don't really get like a different body, but you sort of get a second chance at maybe like restarting your life um, and just starting over. And then my second question oh, is... I think, uh, did you have oh, a comment? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> my perspective of it would be like, for the are you taking the God out of the world part yeah. of it, well, I feel like if God made the world, then like he put ideas into everybody's head. So like he gave them the, the ability to think of this process. So I feel like it wouldn't be taking him out of the world because he's giving them the ideas on how to do it. So then, does the idea of immortality go against the religious views of death? Can science beat the inevitable in the idea that God controls when individuals die? Immortality does kind of go against a lot of um, like religions and like their views because like the main goal is to mainly get to the afterlife in most of them. And this idea of immortality would just allow individuals to be frozen and brought back and never they never actually reach the end. Lance, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was all about to say that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. um, I kind of believe, like, I kind of see it as, at least right now, everyone, it's almost like a fast track to death, at least, because who knows, like, I know that it says, like, you can preserve the body, but all the damage that's done, we don't know if, like, the brain gets damaged when it's frozen, so then it's like, they're either already dead, or, like, that's why I don't think it's, like, the immortality thing, and I don't obviously can't tell right now if science is going to or not. Yeah. So that's just how I think it. Yeah, that's, I feel like we don't really know the side effects yet of this, so we don't really know, like, maybe we'll never be able to bring these uh, individuals back to life. So then do you think having a society centered on science makes people believe that they themselves are able to beat death and therefore it's not discussed in public as much? Um, I think definitely, yeah, and, like, um, not just able to beat death, but able to beat, like, other things, too, just, like, the heavy, like, focus on science that our society does have. Like, it makes a lot of people feel like they're invincible, so that's kind of an attitude that a lot of people have. So I saw on one of the slides, like, the cons was, like, false hope, yeah. and I feel like it kind of goes with this question because, like, well... If you could argue that like believing in a religion is kind of a false hope because like nobody a hundred percent knows if it's true or not. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. You could definitely see both sides because like there isn't like definitely for sure like God exists and we don't really know that this really works. So I feel like both sides is sort of 
you, know, you really don't know. So do you think cryogenics will ever work? And do you think all people from different social classes will actually be able to do it? Yeah. Um, I don't think cryogenics will ever work. I just, I don't, I don't believe it. And I also don't think that if it would work that all social class would, classes would have access. Like I feel like it would probably be marketed and then it would just be like people with a higher social class would be able to do it. Based on the price that I found online, I mean, $20,000 to $200,000 is a big range, and most of them were the upper half of that. And so people don't have that kind of money to put in, like, freezing themselves when they die. So unless the price comes down, I kind of agree that maybe not all people who will be able to do it. Yeah. It's not just the price of freezing, but then you have to maintain the facilities because if the power goes out and the bodies thaw, you know, unregulated, you know, it's so. Yeah. Who knows in the future? It's kind of an un. Uh, there's no end to the expense. We, I mean, uh, no certain end to the expense. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think like projects would ever be available to everyone. Also, I don't think they would work because you have to like interact with the entire body. That's why the crystals are formed because of all the water in the body. But I don't think it'll ever work because you can't fully dehydrate someone's body and then freeze it. Yeah. I think if we think like <clears throat> forever, like eventually it would be available for everybody, I think. Because like the longer something's around, the price goes down. Like flat screen TVs used to be really, really, really expensive and now like everybody has them, so. I personally don't really think that cryogenics will ever work, just from the standpoint of I never really understood how they could be dead and they bring them back years later. It just seems a little, I don't know, complicated and I don't know if it will ever reach that level. <laughs>